Hey everybody, welcome back. Today, I am gonna go through some of the recent tips that I've been sharing with my email list. If you are interested in getting these things first thing as soon as I send them out, you can go to dannyosmond.com slash roadmap to join that email list. So I got a bunch of topics today. Again, if I share any articles, I'll put the link in the show notes so that you can get them. First thing I wanna talk about is podcast pitching. So hiring someone to pitch you to other podcasters to be a guest. So I'm gonna share an article about this that was in Medium. Basically, if you're pitching to other podcasters, I'm urging you, please, please don't try the spray and pray method because I, I know I've mentioned before, I get I easily get five pitch emails a week, okay? and a lot of these emails that I get don't even get my name right sometimes. They are pitching people I would never want to have on my podcast because they don't relate to my topic at all. And I've mentioned some strategies in previous episodes, but please read this article that I'm going to share uh, so that you aren't making these mistakes that really irritate most podcasters. And we we all talk with each other about this and, and in the industry, we talk about it a lot. So read that article. I also am going to share an article about hit podcast, and it's it's more about how podcast listeners really, you know, they gravitate to a few shows that they like, and then they stick with those shows. So this article that was in Bloomberg talks about how it's really not there. There really haven't been a lot of new hit podcasts recently, um, and it's not that you can't create a new podcast that becomes a hit, but the bar is actually so much higher because people stick with the hit podcast that they love and they stick with the three or four that they they follow. So you've got to do something new and it's going to take longer and it's going to take a lot more work to get there. But this article in Bloomberg, I loved its take on the podcast industry right now. And, it, and it's really why I tell you, I tell anyone that is starting a podcast right now that you've got to be ready to publish your podcast consistently, week in, week out, every other week, every every month for six months, 12 months before you might start to feel momentum or you've gotta be really focused, really focused with your topic, okay? Recently, I also shared a little bit about Libsyn and some of the changes that they've been making. Uh, they are getting ready to move fully to their Libsyn 5, their new user interface. And over the last few months, they've made some major changes to the code with um, that new interface as they move forward. So if you are on Libsyn and you've seen any weirdness in your feed, like episodes disappearing and then reappearing the next day, those changes, those updates were likely the culprit. Um, things are working fine now. And if you've played with Libsyn 5, I, I bet you like the changes. It's it's really much more modern now. Uh, and, and I love it. The other thing that I shared recently about Libsyn is, and, and all podcasts in general, is there for most media hosts and most RSS feeds, you have a field where you can set the episode permalink, okay? Uh, this is basically the link that is shown if you go into Apple and you click on the episode page or the episode website link in Apple Podcasts. This is the website that it redirects to. So you can change that permalink. And the thing that I talked about is that for every episode, that link has to be different. OK, that link has to be unique. And so in Libsyn, you can very easily set it to the actual Libsyn blog page where you can have a unique page for every episode. And then you can also um, set that link to not index. So this page won't show up in search results, but it'll make sure that you always have a different page for every episode. Um, you can also on your website do a new page with a new link uh, for a new episode. But with WordPress and a lot of things, you have to wait until the episode publishes to be able to get the link unless you do the same link over and over. But then uh, and just change the number, but then you don't get the SEO. You know, you see what I'm saying? Like, this is why for that episode website page, it's nice to just have something that will automatically change. I did also talk recently about client side stats or advanced stats that you can see from Apple, Google, and Spotify. So I'd urge you to check those out. You can go to podcastconnect.apple.com or, um, uh, I will I will link list the links for Google and Spotify. I can't think of them right now. But if you go to those special client side stats, you are getting different analytics than you can get from your media, your host side stats. 
Um, so I would urge you to check it out. You can see things like percentage of consumption, p- how long people are listening to episodes, where they're dropping off, where they're skipping, all those types of things are really interesting to see. I did want to take a second because in a recent email, I did congratulate one of our clients, um, our client, Dr. Ginger Campbell, who's the host of Brain Science, uh, Books and Ideas, and the Graying Rainbows podcast, um, was inducted into the Podcast Hall of Fame. Ginger has been podcasting for a long time, I believe since 2005. So she's a very, very, very OG podcaster. And she was honored uh, to be inducted into the Podcast Hall of Fame. Um, it This honor recognizes an individual's outstanding work in podcasts and their significant contributions to the industry. And it, you might think, oh, uh, Podcast Hall of Fame, That's who's who goes into that? Well, this year, the eight inductees included, in addition to Ginger, Mark Marin, uh, Nikaila Matthews, Emily Morse, so Dr. Emily, Dave Slusher, Evo Terra, Glenn Washington, and Molly Wood. So it was a pretty big, pretty important class. And they were inducted back in March, on March 25th, at um, Podcast Movements Evolutions Conference. So that was awesome. Now, Last thing I want to share is it was a big thing. This is this is something I'll share the links to, um, but I want to explain it a little bit. This is was how to get promoted by Apple Podcasts. People ask this all the time. Okay. And I say all the time, it's you know, it's really hard to get a podcast to go viral, but the best way to have your podcast go viral is to get it featured by Apple Podcasts. Okay. Now, Apple recently published a new article to offer tips on how to submit for promotion and the best practices. So it's a great article. I want you to read it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna work through it a little bit here uh, because it's been a mystery for a while about how to submit for promotion and how to get promoted and things like that. So here are some additional thoughts that weren't explicitly stated in this article. And I've gathered them from my my ideas and also a few other industry experts that have commented on this. First of all, the form, the submission form. You want to highlight an episode when you submit that would be attractive to the masses, okay? Keep your thoughts brief, keep them direct. Don't submit too often either, okay? I think you can only submit up to like once every six to eight weeks. And then when you submit your episode, focus on the benefit to the audience. Okay, wanting to be featured is not a reason to be featured. You need to focus on what you're giving the audience, what the value of that episode is to the Apple Podcasts audience. Second thing about uh, I want to talk about is the art. Okay, your podcast art. Podcast art is super important. Okay, and it can actually sync your submission if it's not exactly the right spec. So your podcast art, and then there's also special art that you have to send in with the promotion, okay? So you need to make sure you get the right specs. The art has to be high quality, okay? So this isn't something you do in Canva. You might wanna get a relationship with a really good graphic designer if you if you wanna try and um, submit your podcast for promotion regularly. Uh, and the art that you submit has to be different from your podcast art. So you can't just take your podcast art and change the size or whatever in Canva. Um, what I would really recommend is that you go to Apple Podcasts or log into iTunes and look at the current banners that are in the browse area, uh, the browsing area of Apple Podcasts and the new and noteworthy sections, okay, to see what is Apple approving. What do they like? That will give you a good idea of what your art needs to look like and what it needs to have in it. Now let's talk about the title, okay, the title of your episode. Be brief, be to the point, and make sure that your episode titles are searchable, okay? They're need, they need to have really good keywords in the episode title or Apple is not going to care. Like if it's some random inside joke, they're, gonna, they're not going to promote that. They need to promote an episode. They need to promote something that is very clear to the audience. Okay. And finally, I want to talk about timing. You don't want to cut it too close. Okay. So if you have an episode that is coming up, you want to submit it about four weeks before you want the episode featured. Now, also the episode has to be done. It has to be scheduled. It has to be available before you actually submit it for feature because Apple is going to ask you about that. They're going to ask you your marketing plan. Okay, they're not going to do all the work. They they want to know how you're promoting the episode as well. Uh, they're probably going to look at your social media as well. So if you att- intend to apply to be featured, now would be a good time to start sharing episodes of your podcast in your social media and use the Apple Podcasts link. 
okay, in addition to your own site. Use Apple Podcasts link to your podcast episodes when you promote them so that they see you're promoting Apple Podcasts. They will appreciate the appearance of you promoting them, okay? Now, the final thing you need to know is you're not going to hear back from Apple when you submit. So don't even expect it. Even if you get selected, they're not going to tell you you've been selected. Um, they get so many promotion submissions that you're, you're not going to hear about it. You're just going to show up there. So try this out. Um, many of you I know have great content, and I encourage you to submit when you have something that you think should be featured, whether it's timely, whether it's major, whether it's a big guest, whether it's just something you think is a really good episode. I encourage you to do that. So that's just four or five of the things that I've shared recently in emails to my list. And I wanted you to get this information as well. But again, if you want to join my email list, go to dannyosmond.com slash roadmap and you can join the email list there. And as always, if you have any feedback, if you have any questions, certainly rate and review this podcast, share it with people. But email me, danny at emeraldcitypro.com or send me a voicemail at speakpipe.com slash podcast strategies. That way you can give me a question. 90 seconds, I think, is what they allow you to do. And I will answer your question here on the podcast. So until next week, I will see you then.